as we're moving along, the first priority for the SISM. One of the things I think you'll find on this exam is there's, there's some repetitive nature in the types of questions and the topics they focus on. And I got to tell you one thing, business driven. Security is driven by the business. The business is our customer right? And I realize we're part of the same enterprise here, but it's the business units, it's the business managers, they're the ones who make the decisions we advise in information security. Now, it is entirely possible that the business wants to focus on ease of use. Well, ease of use as a security professional, those are not the first words that come out of my mouth when I'm advising for security controls and implementations. I don't say, hey, let's make it so easy that everybody can access everything they want anytime, right? The, those two butt heads. But if that's the focus of the business, that's what I'm here to implement. It goes back to that idea of enough security. You know, how much security is enough? You can never have too much. Yes, you can. When the security you implement no longer supports the business but hinders it, that's too much security. So in some environments, if their focus is on delivering um, a seamless, easy-to-use customer experience, then we may sacrifice security. Well, that doesn't make me delighted as a security professional. So I document, and I conduct a risk assessment, and I define the risks, the findings of my assessment, and I let the business owner make their choice, sign their name, and I'll implement security as they see fit. They are the decision makers, but they also have the liability as well, right? So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a two-edged sword, you know, having getting to be the decision maker, but then also if you make the decisions, you're liable. Our job is to submit, to implement the controls that the business sees fit, right? And if my ideas vary, if, even if good security practices vary from what the business wants, I document, I have them sign off, right? Now, that being said, um, that also means for ideas like, like a, a perfectly good question could be, who is best to sponsor the security function within an enterprise or the security program within an enterprise? And so immediately we start thinking about, oh, the chief information officer, the chief security officer, the chief this, that, and the other. And I think what you might actually see is the chief operations officer as being a very good choice. And the reason for that being is that they understand the needs of the business. So the chief operation officer can ensure that our security program supports the business as the business feels it should be done. You see what I mean? So going back to think about the answer that puts the business first all the time. That is a tough pill for many of us to swallow in information security because when we see these huge vulnerabilities get exploited, many times it's because of bad decision, decisions made by the business. But it's just like this. You know, if, if I suspect I've got termites in my house and I hire, you know, uh, an exterminator to come by and evaluate and they say, man, you know, you've got termites all in the foundation. We're going to recommend you do all of these things and we're going to set you up on a monthly plan so that we come out and regularly treat your house. You're going to do this, that, and the other. You know what? As a customer... It, I can still say, nah, I think we'll be okay. Mm, they're okay. I mean, they're just a few bugs. What, what's a couple of termites going to do, right? As a customer, that's my right, right? And I decide, you know what, your option's just too expensive. I don't expect to be in this house more than three or four years. I don't, you know, maybe I'm the highway's coming through. I'm going to sell my property, what, whatever. As a customer, I'm always right, you know? I won't say I'm always right, but I, as a customer, I'm the one who always signs the checks and, you know, continues or discontinues the use of your services. So that's one of the things that was tough for me in preparing for this exam is sometimes the better solution is not the correct solution. You can have too much security and who defines what enough security is? It's the business. Okay. So 
you know, our top priority is to support the business. That doesn't mean we turn a bl- blind eye to craziness. And it's not the type of test that's going to say, you know, the business owner wants you to disable all passwords and open every system up to the internet with no control. That's, they're not going to put you in that position. But they might, you know, put it forward that the business's focus is on ease of use you, however, want a 16-character password, you know, who wins that fight? And it's always going to be the business, all right? Keeping in mind that on this exam and hopefully throughout the world, the business understands security. Now, now that's a big assumption, so, so let me back that up. On this test, this exam, the business will understand security and the benefit of it. The business is not going to be asking you to do anything crazy. Now, in the real world, that's not always the case, you know, but the bottom line continues securities here for the business. I can make you a secure environment. You know what? You're off the Internet. You're not on a network. Your computer stays powered off. Well, that's secure. I can't secure a system better than that. Yeah, but it's not functional. So we want to find that balance between the two leaning towards make the business run. And it may have felt like I just did overkill on that. Man, if I had a quarter for every time that topic comes up in this class and came up on the exam, I'd have a lot of quarters. So, all right. So, when we start, um, one of the first things that we start with is understanding governance of the organization. And where this says C- uh, CISM priorities, honestly, let me, let me just go back here to this, the first priority of the CISM. We can sum this up by saying, know the business. What is the first priority for the CISM? Know and understand the business. Before you write security strategy, look at the business strategy. Look at the organizational strategy. Before you write security policy, look at company policy. Look at the company vision and mission and overall strategy as a whole. Again, start with the business. All right, now we have to understand security governance, of course, and that's really going to be the framework on which everything else is built, right? Governance, when we're talking about governance, we're looking at senior managers, those folks with the chief uh, in their job titles, the C's in their job titles. Um, we are looking at the board of directors, steering committees, maybe in uh, functioning as senior management, depending on their roles and, and their function in the organization. But these are the entities that are responsible for effective governance. And if we don't have effective governance, we can't have effective management. And if we don't have effective management, we can't have an effective program. Without an effective program, we can't have effective security. So it all starts with governance and senior management. And ultimately, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the outputs of effective governance and turn that into an information security strategy. And then that strategy will be implemented through our security program. We'll have a roadmap that shows how to take strategy 